Well, thank you for joining us again for our midweek Bible study as we continue our study through the Psalms. Uh, we have uh, begun book four of the Psalter. Uh, we're looking at Psalms 90 through 106. And tonight I want to encourage you to turn to Psalm chapter 91. Uh, as we turn, as you turn there, I just want to ask you a question. Do you ever feel anxious? <laughs> That's kind of a silly question, isn't it? I mean, all of us have moments of anxiety. We, we feel those anxiety in different ways. It manifests in different ways in our lives. Sometimes it is the, uh, the um, uh, stressors that, that physically hit us. You know, we, we feel a tightness in our chest. We think we're having a hard time, but really it's just stress. It's anxiety. Or maybe it's sleepless nights, and it causes us to uh, stay awake, uh, running through our head all the different things that that uh, um, are, aren't going well or, or threatening our future. We, uh, we, we feel anxiety. Um, and in some ways, anxiety is help, helpful. Anxiety itself is not necessarily bad. If I see a rattlesnake and, and I'm fishing in a mountain stream and I walk down a path and there's a rattlesnake right in front of me, I'm going to be anxious. There's some anxiety there. That's healthy. That's healthy anxiety. But if I am sleeping in my bed in Chesapeake and, and laying there and I'm worried that uh, I'm going to meet a rattlesnake tomorrow, that, that's probably not healthy. Uh, so you see, there, there are different ways to be anxious. Here, we're going to be dealing with the things that cause us anxious thoughts and how can we navigate anxious thoughts in a healthy way in a way that is fitting a person who's been brought in God's family through faith in Jesus Christ. Psalm 91 is a passage that uh, is set in the context of encouragement and commitment for the children of God. The opening verses of this psalm include a declaration of trust and commitment, uh, and these words ring in our ears today, encourage us in the struggles and insecurities of our life. The psalm shares hope with us when we ask, where can I turn for security? You see, a lack of security is a primary cause for anxiety. And in verses 1 and 2, the psalmist begins by saying, let's answer this question in a positive way. How can I find security and, and escape anxiety? Uh, what is the answer to my anxiety? Well, I, I want to feel secure. Um, so where do we turn for, uh, for security? Verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. The psalmist uh, had earlier declared in Psalm chapter 20, verse 7, some trust in chariots, and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. It's the search for security in the wrong places, chariots and horses, that heightens, heightens uh, the chaotic chords of anxiety in our, in our heart. Uh, when we look at verse 1 and 2, what it means is <clears throat> strength of others or personal power will never deliver the security we need to escape anxiety. Implicit in this psalm's opening words is the, uh, is the illumination for followers of Jesus um, that we must choose well our source of security. If we trust in chariots and horses, Psalm 20, then, then we're going to be insecure and filled with anxiety. Um, we have an opportunity, however, to trust um, in the strength of the living God. When we place our confidence in something other than God through faith in Christ, uh, we're on a pathway of trouble. And you know that this is exactly what happened in Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3. Um, Adam and Eve are there, and God said, you can eat of any, true, uh, any fruit of any tree in the garden except for one. You can't eat that one. And so Adam and Eve, they, they live in their life, live in large, living in intimacy with God, finding security there. But the serpent, the, 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 the Satan himself comes and he says, hey, listen, 
What God said is not true. If you will eat of this one tree, the fruit of this one tree that God said don't eat of, then you'll be more secure. You'll you'll be like God. You'll be the most secure. God has promised security uh, and intimacy with himself, uh, but he's really playing a game with you. If you would just eat this fruit, you'll find yourself more secure. You'll be like God himself. And Adam and Eve chose to believe Satan more than they believed God, and they chose to find security in a fruit that God had forbidden. The result was insecurity, not security. The very source of security, intimacy with God himself, uh, was cast out the window because they chose to be secure in something that they could handle. And home. They wanted to be their own security. Oh, friends, that's exactly the way we live our lives. If we're going to find security, the source of that security must be intimacy with God. We find security when we walk intimately with God through faith in Christ. And that's the point that the psalmist makes. He says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides securely under the shadow of the Almighty. If you live intimately with God, then you're going to be protected under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, when, when we say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him I'll trust. He's saying, when you walk intimately with God through faith in Christ, then you will find God to be your refuge, your fortress, uh, uh, one who secures us in his grip. The idea of a fortress is a, a place of high safety. A refuge is a secure and protective area which guarantees, in which God guarantees uh, safety. Um, when we trust God and commit our way to him and dwell in the hiding place of his love, we will find security in a world of uncertainty. Guys, here, the source of security, if you want to be secure and, and, and escape anxiety, then you need to live intimately with God, not run away from God. You see, not only does God give us himself to be our security, but God's security system provides us an escape from anxiety. Life brings a multitude of ferocious foes, and, and there are nets that would trap us in the prison of pain and devastation. There are events that are sweeping down on us like a plague. The day turns quickly to nightmarish terrors as we face the uncertainties of life. In the midst of all these anxious breeding moments and circumstances, God in his grace provides a security system for us. Now, that security system uh, we find in these next few verses, uh, beginning in verse uh, 3 all the way to verse 16. Listen uh, to what the psalmist says. Verse 3, surely God shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the perilous pestilence. He'll cover you with the feathers and under the wings you, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, but it shall not come near you. Only look with your eyes. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give charge, give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, uh, and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So we look at these verses. I just want you to lean into the security system that God has made available to you. Now, the key, the key is the very first, when you make God your dwelling place, when you, when you submit yourself to him, when you live in his care and under his uh, sovereign rule, when you make the Lord your dwelling place, then the security system becomes something that, that applies to you. So as followers of Jesus, you have uh, been forgiven your sin through faith in Christ. Uh, you've been brought into God's family. You've been uh, dw indwelt by the Spirit of God so that God is your dwelling place. And as long as he's your dwelling place, you live secure. And 
uh, you escape anxiety, uh, the, the bad kind, the overwhelming kind. You, you look to God as your source of security, not other things. So when God is your security, then, then you find a freedom, an answer to anxiety. Okay, so as followers of Jesus, you've been brought into God's family. He is your dwelling place. But as followers of Jesus, we also can turn to other sources for security. That's called sin. Anytime we look to something else to provide for us that God alone has promised to provide, we have sinned against him. When we trust someone or something other than God or above and beyond God, then then we are sinning against God. It's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Again, instead of obeying God and living in intimately with him by obeying him, we trust that this fruit that he told us not to eat is something that will give us more security than he can provide. So the key for us to, to, to turn on God's security system in our life and to have an answer to anxiety, the, the key for us is to live in obedience to him. And when we do, when we live uh, with God as our dwelling place, intimately with him, in obedience to him, confessing our sin when we sin, turning from it, when we live in obedience with him, intimately with him, then God delivers us from our snares and from the snares that this world can bring. We can be certain that God will bring deliverance. The fowler's snare in verse 3 depicts the threat of devastation from enemies, natural or or, uh, people. Uh, Many things can trip us up and hinder our journey to the best. The, the reality is that, uh, that we may have sin that ensnares us and trips us up. That's Hebrews 12. Uh, or it may be circumstances that, that uh, hinder us or trip us up. Either way, well, we must set our focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to uh, set aside the, the sin and the weight that so easily entangles us. When we uh, give ourselves wholeheartedly to God, live intimately in his care and obedience to him, then he delivers us from the fowler's snare. Not only that, but he covers our soul with faith rather than fear. That's verses 4 through 8. Verses 4 through 8, the, the psalmist talks about covering us uh, with God's, uh, that God covers us with his feathers, and, and under his wings we find refuge. He, His truth found in his word becomes our shield. Um, We don't don't fear the terrors of the night. We don't fear arrows that fly by day. We don't fear pestilence or darkness, destruction that lays waste at noonday. Even though thousands or ten thousands die alongside us, we know that we are secure because God is our refuge. Um, And and so uh, when we... Uh, live intimately with God, then he covers our soul with faith, faith in him rather than the fear that uh, so uh, so much of this world would attack us with. You know, one of the things that confuses me as followers of Jesus, we uh, so often in, in the church, we, we become so fearful of, of things that are beyond our control. And I can't control what happens to the arrow's flight that's making its way toward my soul. But I can trust God who will be my shield and my buckler. You see, the reality is we look at all the circumstances around and we watch Fox News or CNN or whatever news agency and we see the scrolling line at the bottom of the page, uh, Good Morning America, and talk, look at all the bad news and the uh, terrible times that come our way. And we look at those things and we say, uh, you know, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. It may be, but not you. As followers of Christ, we dwell under the refuge of God's care. When we trust him, we put our faith in him. Is your faith in God stronger than your fear of the circumstances that you can't even control? And maybe that's a prayer that we need to pray in our lives today. God, I, I need to rest in your lap more fully. And God, will you turn my fear to faith? Not only does God deliver us from the snares not only does he 
cover our soul with faith rather than fear, but also he sends his special messengers to help us. Now, again, you heard something perhaps in verse 11 that reminded you of, of Jesus during his testing. Uh, that that uh, verse 10, 11, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You remember that? Uh, that, that was a verse that was used uh, by the devil to invite Jesus to cast himself off the uh, temple mount. And, and so it, it, he promised to give his angels charge over you. Um, but the reality is, it, even though it was being misused by the devil, and Jesus was not fooled by that, um, the psalmist declares, and we need to hear from the truth of God's word, that when God is our refuge and our dwelling place, evil... Uh, will not overwhelm us. No plague or touch of evil will uh, destroy a faithful follower of God, no matter where he or she might be. Part of the process for security that the psalmist describes is this angelic force that God, um, God sends to our rescue. And there are angels watching over you as followers of Jesus. So God gives us this security system when, when he is our dwelling place. He is, our, he, he is the one in whom we trust. And that really is the key. Again, verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Um, we, we need to hear verse 9 again. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. The key for us is to submit ourselves to God and to look to him as our supreme source for security. And there are anxiety-driven moments that all of us face, but in the midst of those moments, we look to God. We rest in God. So if, if we're facing anxiety, what's the pathway out of that anxiety? Uh, look at verses 14 through 16. Because he has set his love upon me. Now, this is God talking. Because you have set your love upon God, therefore God will deliver you. God will set you on high because you have known his name. You will call upon God and God will answer you. God will be with you in trouble. God will deliver you and honor you. With long life, God will satisfy you and show you his salvation. That's what 14 through 16 is saying. Uh, the pathway out of anxiety is living in intimacy with God. Again, it goes back to verse 9 and verse 1. He's saying because you're, you're living intimately with God through faith in Christ and dwelt by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, here's how I'm going to reward. I'm going to give you um, freedom from anxiety. I'm going to... I, Again, I'm, I'm not talking about complete freedom. I'm just saying you're going to find security in the face of anxiety. And so well, what does it look like uh, to um, make God your dwelling place? What does it look like uh, be, uh, when we say that God is our refuge and our most high and our dwelling place? What, what does that look like? Well, first, and I think God defines that in verses 14 through 16. He's, first, the pathway out of anxiety is to Set your love upon the Lord. You know, marriage is a union that has been fixed for all time in the foundation of God's plan for the life of a man and a woman. But the covenant of marriage is not whimsical, emotional, physical response to the feeling of the hour of the moment. It's more than a feeling to quote uh, the lyrics of a distant song. It's the absolute commitment of the heart and life to another for God's purpose and glory. In a phrase, marriage is to set my love upon Edie. It is to give my all to her. Well, that's the picture that God paints in verse 14. If, if, we're, if God is going to be our hiding place, if, if he is our refuge, our most high, our dwelling place, if that's who God is, if that's how we escape, uh, how we find security and have an answer for our anxiety, then that means we're going to set our love upon God. Verse 14. I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Give God all that I am. Uh, it, it's an absolute commitment to God and for God. It's the daily diet of 
a God as my most precious treasure. And when he is my most precious treasure, then he'll rescue me from anxious thoughts and circumstances. The pathway out of anxiety is to make God our dwelling place. We make God our dwelling place when we set our love upon him. And when we rest in dynamic fellowship with him. Uh, The beauty of our faith is that it's not about knowing moral codes of conduct. Our faith is is built upon a dynamic fellowship with God through faith in Christ. It's it's not about following rules. It's about living in a relationship. And that's the meaning of uh, verse 15, um, when, uh, or verse, uh, the end of verse 14, he says, when God says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. Uh, the meaning of know my name is the picture of relationship and fellowship. The powerful life of protection is not found in my abilities or strength. It's found when God, uh, uh, whom we walk with in fellowship through the Spirit, who abides within us, sets us on high. He plants our feet on the solid, firm foundation of his fortress. To make God our dwelling place means that we're going to live in intimate fellowship with him. Living in intimate fellowship with him means that we're going to talk with him. We're going to walk with him. We're going to find out what he wants and adjust our life to fit that. We're going to live according to the truth of his word. We're going to be obedient to him. We're going to not risk um, uh, a rupture of fellowship with him for the sake of sin. Uh, we're going to walk in the Spirit. And we're going to rest in that dynamic fellowship with God. The most important thing I can do every day is to make sure my re- fellowship with God is right on track. Well, we uh, find a pathway out of anxious thoughts when we set our love upon the Lord, when we rest in dynamic fellowship with Him, and when we call upon Him for help. When it's all said and done, we find the pathway out of anxiety when we say, God, I need your help. Uh, he shall call upon me. Verse 15, he shall call upon me, I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. I'll satisfy him with a long life and I'll show him my salvation. God promises to answer when we call upon him. Now, Paul said it a little bit differently in Philippians 4, 6, and he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You have anxious thoughts and leave them with the Lord. Call upon him. God, here's what's, here's what's causing anxiety in my heart. You've promised to be my resting place, my dwelling place, my security system. I'm turning to you. Will you help me? God, I give you this laundry list of things that are worrying me. God, I give them to you. Now I'm leaving them in your care. I'm trusting you with them. God, hears that request. He hears that prayer and he answers. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God gives us an answer to our anxieties. Uh, He is the source of our security. He gives us a security system that, that provides stability uh, and, and an answer to our anxiety. And it's all built around intimate fellowship with him. Will you make God your dwelling place today and every day? Uh, will you rest in him as your hiding place? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, infinitely above and beyond all that we ask or imagine, according to the power at work among us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to every generation forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Good night.